Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode on companion products. Miss Honoré, how are you doing? Um, today is a great day. It is. <laughs> we, we, we both like woke up like pew, knocking out all the stuff, yeah. got all these great events. It's Thursday. Yes. Let's make this happen. It's yes. Thursday. Um, in your, we, so we've talked a bunch about like different like elements of building a million dollar book business, building a million dollar creative entrepreneurs empire, all the things, all the things. One of the things we've barely mentioned in the videos up to this point are companion products, but you do a really um, focused job of pointing this out in your build a million dollar book business course. Um, so what exactly is a companion product and why does it matter? Um, so a companion product could be any of the following, a workbook, a guide, an action planner, a planner, or a journal. And those are just five that are possible. Um, I am a huge fan, and we talked about this in our video, the three-legged stool, right? Where you do a book, some kind of companion, so a workbook or something like that, and then a course. But we really didn't take a stop on what's the companion, and somebody has a book coming out and very soon. And as I was reviewing the, you know, the first round of design, which is gorgeous, by the way, thank you. I was noting that you provide so many things to think about for an aspiring course creator to the point of, I need a place to collect my thoughts. Be right? overwhelming. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I don't want to have to go back and reread the entire book in order to, to go now, what were those uh, pieces of software that I might need or how do I get my lighting right? What is the, what are the suggestions you made around equipment and things mm -hmm. like that? And so I was thinking, boy, it would be so great if you had um, a guide, you know, yeah. monetize your book with a course guide. And so it's like a list of all the things and, uh, you know, I'm shameless plug here, but you know, I have the workbook for you must write a book and I must, you know, I must write my book is the companion workbook. I did, you must market your book and I must market my book because I want people to have a place to collect their thoughts and write things down. And this is all by request. Hmm. People saying, I wish I had a place to journal about this, think about this, process through this, make a note, right? Like, you know, right. What's the name of my doctor? Where, where are my medications? How much am I supposed to take? Right. What's the mm -hmm. schedule, right? These things are helpful for any reader of any nonfiction book. And it's a great add on for an author. It's an add on product. It basically uh, exponentially increases your income streams as well. Right. Because then you have um, in very short order, because it is a much less complex product to create than a book. The book is everything somebody needs to know. The workbook or the guide or the companion planner is all of the meat taken out and you've got the bones. And then the author can create the their own meat to go on the bones, right? And so I think for for your book, that would be the, the thing I would suggest that you do is come up with some companion product that goes with your book for the benefit of your reader. Gotcha. Now, some of these companion products are sellable products like the workbooks. Yeah. Um, would you consider like the free checklists, uh, free downloads, things like that, that you offer in like your special invitations or yeah. um, special resource pages on your website that are attached to your book, right? Like, hey, if you loved all these lists, you can download them here for free. Um, those are obviously free resources. Would you consider those like con companion products? Yeah, they go, they, th this is the beautiful part about repurposing your content, right? So you're, you would be repurposing your content from the book into the workbook, mm -hmm. but to, to be a generous author means that you're going to provide some of those things for people to just go and download. So I have, you must market your book. And then I have the book bonuses, which are a few of those things, which I felt like would complete the reader's journey 
without having a workbook, without having a course, right? So I want someone to feel complete when they've read the book. If they want more, then I'm going to provide a space for them to have more. And if they want to learn more, I'm going to provide a place, a course for them to go and learn more. It's all about the, the experience of the, of the customer, right? Of the reader. Right. So yep. I want them to have a full experience, but sometimes people want more. And so you can provide a way for them to get more. See, this is a, a, a very similar, but different approach that is taken in courses because courses give you this, uh, like kind of like container, right. To put all these yes. things in. Yep. Um, and it's not physical if it's a uh, on online, right. uh, right. delivered material. So you can take all of those wonderful elements of your book and all those companion um, components of your or, or products for your book, and you can offer them within the construct of an online course as yep. well. And it doesn't yep. mean that the course has to be completed online, but they can access all this stuff online in the one course. Um, I love the workbook because and this is, you know, if you're a nonfiction author and you've got a book, and you've developed a companion workbook, you're gonna integrate those two together in the curriculum. Um, Honoré does That's this, right. I do this, That's you know, right. it's, it's very yep. common practice. In yep. fact, we were just talking about this before the video, like there's tools to help you do that in certain ways where it can be digitally integrated or you can just have downloads right. or whatever. Um, right. But it's just like a super power up for your course. So if you're, if you're thinking about building a course, you may not have thought about like building those elements into your course as well. And um, you can do the same thing with like the free checklist. In fact, at the end of my courses, I actually put like a, like a additional resources tab yep. um, because we'll sprinkle all those resources throughout someone's curriculum. And then at the end, just like you were saying with the book, you get to the end, you're like, oh my God, there was so many, like there was lists and things. Yes. I'll put like an additional resources they? tab at yes. the end of the course and just stack them all in there as well um, so that people don't have to look far for them. I took that suggestion um, right to the bank and did exactly the same thing with you must market your book. Um, and I must market my book. I took all those resources and added them to book marketing mastery and created a separate chapter with everything so that there's one stop shopping, right. For someone who yeah. needs, Oh, I need to know this. Where is it? Oh, chances are if I want it, it's in this one particular chapter that has all the things in it. Yeah. And what, what I usually advise people to do, but I sometimes forget to do myself, which is, you know, probably not, uh, not abnormal for someone who does consulting and right. coaching so yep. much. It's like, yep. you should do this and you should do that. And I go look at my course and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do this myself. Is that in the beginning of the course in the chapter about how to navigate the course, right? Because your mm -hmm. learner hasn't, I tell them, hey, look, that, that additional resources pile is at the end oh. of the course, like it's at the bottom of the curriculum list. Okay. And so go down there and grab it if you need it, um, because yeah. If they just start at the beginning and they're very linear and they don't like progress through that, that yeah. list of chapters will go lower than the course player or to the bottom of the screen. And they just won't know it exists till they get later in the course. And then they're like, oh, this is pretty cool. Didn't know this was yeah. here. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just making a note right now to add that because yeah. I think that that's brilliant. It's like, by the way, you're going to see all of these resources and you should know that they are at the end of the course. I think that's awesome. Right. Yeah. That's one of the things I try to include. Um, so I guess one of the questions I had in the book creation process yep. was if I was going to create these companion products, how important is it, or does it even matter if I create those products in parallel with the book, right? So if I'm writing the book, um, sure. do I need to write the workbook at the same time? Should I do it afterward? Is there like a, a best practice? I know there's no laws or rules, but is there a best practice? Right. Um, gosh, I think probably the answer is yes, there is a best practice, but I will asterisk that and say that I must write my book was created because people said, I wish I had a place to write things down. The mm. Prosperous Writer Productivity Journal was created because readers of Prosperity for Writers wanted a place to write things down. And they were both created after the fact. Mm. And so I learned a few things in that process. And so I think the best practice, if you're asking like in an ideal perfect world, do you want to release book and companion at the same time, the answer is sure, because you want to be referencing in your book. I have this companion guide. I have this companion planner. 
and you're going to want to get that. Um, but, and however, comma, <laughs> semicolon, however, comma, um, you can do it whenever you want. You can, I mean, there's, there is a, a consideration time and money, right? So mm -hmm. I guess that's two considerations. Um, putting out a companion requires additional design work, additional time. It's, it's the exact book process again. So you need to create the workbook and have an editor and, or at least have a proofreader, because if you're changing it, you're going to add a few little phrases here and there. Chances are, if you're honore or maybe someone else, you're going to have a typo <laughs> if you don't have a proofreader, yeah. right? I've made all the mistakes, Lucas. So, um, <laughs> you're not perfect. <laughs> we're uh, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you for asking. We're just um, humans. <laughs> we're just humans. Yes. So you, you'll have to reserve your proofreader, reserve your designer, have time to go through the file, order the proof, go through the proofs, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's a mm -hmm. whole other product. So yeah. in as much as it is much faster to market, it is still time and money. Uh, there's still time and money involved in the process. And so you're going to want to make sure sometimes that the book has legs. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so the, the, the other option you have is to have those book bonuses or to create, I don't know if I'm breaking up or you're breaking up. Hmm. You sound good here. I'm not frozen. You're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, you're good. <laughs> the, the, the option that you have is to create a downloadable that someone can get, right? Mm -hmm. So they sign up with their email and you, you kind of test it and see how many people are signing up for the bonuses, how many people are downloading my free stuff. And you can then say, would it be helpful if I created a workbook for you? Would it be created, you know, would it be helpful? And then you can get at least part of the way to revenue positive and realize, okay, this could have legs. I'm going to create it. Gotcha. Yeah. See, so in a perfect world, yes, all the book, all the books come out at the same time, mm -hmm. all the versions of the book, the audio book, <clears throat> all, everything comes out on the same day. And, you know, you just refresh your dashboard and all the books are sold in an imperfect world, which is what we live in. You do things as quickly as you can based on the time and money that you have available to do mm -hmm. it and what makes sense for your business and what makes sense for the book. I know from experience that doing a book and a workbook in concert is my, is my golden ticket. So that's what I do. I'm also able to do that. Yeah. So it might be on your list that you do monetize your book with a course and then monetize your book with a course guide 60 days later or six days later. Yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 yeah. you're speaking right to, to the heart in me because, you know, just going through this process right now with the book, um, I had all the aspirations of doing the workbook, but I, I made my own bed and now I'm sleeping in it. Right. I wanted the accelerated book production timeline. And that took me away from being able to do the workbook at the same time. So my advice to anyone who's considering doing this is to do it the way Honoré teaches you to do it and give yourself a bit more time than I gave myself with my book, because then you can actually have a little yeah. bit of that um, capacity to do both. And like, if I could hit the do over button now, I would have done that. I would have been like in a position to give myself probably another month or two to be able to work on the workbook at the same time and get them out at the same time. Cause just like you're saying, I mean, you know, in the, in the moment, uh, yeah, I wish, I really wish I could just push that workbook out with the book. And, um, there's, there's some, uh, like almost like reverse, uh, engineering here. If you are in a position where you created a book after the course, you, I encourage you, yeah. highly encourage you to consider building the workbook in the course or with the course and then using that to help with the book of the same topic because i've got courses where i've built out worksheets and workbooks and everything and and the thought of building a workbook for those courses is like oh yeah i could get that done in like two days because i already have all the stuff right? right i just have to make it into a different format clean it up add a few things pull away a few things um put all the front and back matter on it and make it work but um, 
if you're starting without a course and you're definitely starting book first, then yeah, that's, that's a whole different game. Um, and if you're going to do a companion workbook with your course, um, I am hesitant to advise my clients to progress without both because in a, right. especially in an online course environment, you absolutely need that application to drive home, like the, get the user, the learner to apply what you're teaching them. And you get a little bit more grace with that in, in the reading environment, um, because usually someone's consuming your information and they've got all their, their minds racing, right? They're like, oh, this is great and everything. And in a course, you're specifically trying to drive them particular to a particular outcome. So you have to guide them through some of that. Um, and so if you have a course and you want to immediately improve the value of that course, there's two things you can do. You can in integrate some live components like live Q and A's, live presentations, that kind of thing. And you can add workbook or worksheet elements. Those are like the, the first two things I would, I would do. And then yep. if you don't have that yet, and you're getting ready to write a book about whatever your course was, was on, do the workbook worksheet elements for the course first, then go into the book. And this mm -hmm. way you've got you'll be able to much better meet that goal of getting both of those produced and out at the same time. Yes. Agreed. And ultimately, um, just get them done. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Put a hard stop on the calendar. So I guess that's what we need to do for you, right. Is decide what we're going to call it, add it to the book that's coming out very shortly. Um, and then perhaps create an opt-in for people that are interested in it. And so then you have, your first buyers, they're ready to go. It's like, oh, I really need that. And right. I'd love to sign up for that. Let me know when it's out. I was going to say, so the, for the last, last thing to, to throw out here real quick before we yeah. run, yeah. how do you, so I know that, uh, like when you own your own website, it's your, your territory, you can, you yeah. can couple the products and promote them. Um, you do the same thing with like your Amazon profiles, right? Like, so you're, your book is pointing toward your workbook and your workbook is pointing toward your book yep. for book sales. Any other, am I missing anything else? Like with promotions and things, do you, um, I guess in your email sequence, you would want to reference them. I mentioned it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So to my uh, advanced reader team, I was producing, I must market my book right up until the end because launching a book in January means that you're competing with Santa for the attention of your designer <laughs> and your editor and <laughs> all the people in your own time. Um, so I was producing it right up until the end. So I mentioned it in my email sequence that the workbook would publish in concert with the book. And it did. Um, as Lucas suggested, giving yourself a little more time is always helpful. I should, um, I, I should have listened, people. <laughs> I don't know if it was suggested to you or not. I totally suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but giving yourself more time, I know it's at the end, it's very much like the last 10% feels like the last 50% and mm -hmm. you just want to get it done. Like, it's like being 40 weeks pregnant. You're like, just get it out. Here's a butter knife. Like, just, just, we're done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, we're just, I just want to be done with it. Mm -hmm. And if you can quash those feelings of, I'm just so tired. I'm just ready to be done with this project and give yourself a little bit more time. You'll be so glad because if you're looking at a book, the way I look at it as an income earner for 10 years, right? I'm looking at mm -hmm. a decade, one or two months here or there wouldn't make that much of a difference, but it will make all the difference in you being able to launch simultaneously. Now here's the Here's the real truth about it, Lucas, is you can argue both sides. We can argue for releasing it in concert in a perfect world. I can also make a really sound argument for 60 days from now, you're releasing the guide and then you have another book release, engaging the algorithms, it's something else to talk to your audience about and those sorts of things. So you can say in your email sequence to your advanced reader team and to um, on announcement day, my book is here, right? So when we get to that day, when you're like, okay, everybody, like I can be loud about it. I can talk about it to the world. You can also say, PS, mark your calendars for 427, because that's when I'm going to release the companion guide to this book. Stay tuned for updates on that. 
and you'll be able to um, have another thing to talk about to your audience. You'll have yet another round of it's here, it's release day, it's super fun. And uh, algorithms for the online retailers don't differentiate between book and book, right? They don't mm -hmm. know book versus workbook versus journal, whatever. It's just a new release. So they will give it the same um, attention regardless of what it is. So you can Perfect. take advantage of that. I would just mention it if it's on your radar, not you, Lucas, but okay. you know, this is to our audience now. If it's on your radar to create something, decide what that something is and then start talking about it. Start talking about it a little bit, even as you're still launching your book. Say, I am going to do a companion journal. I am going to do 365 days to creating your course companion guide or something like that. And just know that that's coming. Gotcha. And talk about it a little bit, put it in your book. And because you're indie publishing, you can go from the monetize your book with a course guide is coming in April page, and you can get a whole new file and say, be sure to grab the monetize your book with a course guide, right? Um, so you can make that change or you can just make that page evergreen. Be sure to grab the guide. Yeah, that was something that surprised me. I wasn't um, as aware of the flexibility that you have with your book content after its publication date. When you're yeah. indie publish, I thought like, man, you're locked, you know, until you do like a, a I don't know what the rule was in my previous uh, government job for publishing sure. policy is we had to have sure. like a certain percentage of content change before we were authorized to. Right reissue well, it makes sense because yeah. otherwise some people would go oh there's a typo i have to redo the whole book and re-upload it mm -hmm. and you definitely don't want to do that my rule is once a year i keep a note and once a year i'll do fresh files nice but i don't uh, for my own stuff right for a client sure. i'll say you know let's get the book out there and then we'll do you know a, one final one final, final, final review, <laughs> the final, 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 final review. Um, and we can make any changes at any time, but that, that has a, it's a blessing and a curse. I have a lot of flexibility. I can change my files anytime I want. Oh no, I have flexibility. I can change my files anytime I want can mm -hmm. also cause people to go into perfectionism and be like, well, I want this image moved like an eighth of an inch to the right. And a 16th of an inch and I've seen it. I've totally seen it. I mean, the, when people realize the flexibility they have, sometimes they get in their heads and they don't say, mm -hmm. okay, we're done. We're done. And we'll come back to it later. Right. There there's, there's a lot of fussy going on, right? You can fuss with it in, yeah. endlessly. For sure. Yeah. That, and, 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 and like you were saying, the opposite end of the spectrum is like, yeah, I can just fix that later. And then they just let, they say that a hundred times. That's a different kind of person. Yes. Yep. The person who goes, oh, I just did a crappy ebook and I uploaded it and it really didn't do anything. And I'm like, what? No, <laughs> you, you uploaded a crappy ebook and it didn't do anything. Huh? Shocking. Huh. Yeah. Imagine that. And, and huh. so, and then, and then imagine three years, that. three, four years later, you hear them complaining that books are old fashioned technology and they don't bring any value to your business and mine didn't win. So it must be the book's right. problem. You know, I just, right. I, I've got a whole video coming out on this soon in a podcast episode and probably a blog article about um, one conversation I had on Twitter. Um, this dude got on there and just said, uh, oh. I think courses are the biggest scam out there. Oh they're, gosh. They're all, it's basically, they're all trash. And I gave him a very simple, succinct response that got, I, th I don't think I've ever gotten as many like likes or traction on a response I've ever done on a, on a post on oh. Twitter before, but it was pretty, or on a conversation I've had in Twitter before, but it was pretty, it was pretty interesting. I was like, no, nah, dude, it's not the course's fault. It's the course creator's fault. Trash course creators. Definitely. Create yes. trash course. Same thing with books. So anyways. Oh yeah. Topic for well, another Well, and I've team. made all those mistakes. I can mm. point a finger because I've made all the mistakes, <laughs> right? I've done all of them, everyone. <clears throat> well, and, and I think, it, you know, uh, this bleeds over into all of those companion products, right? So if you, if you really take your book serious, you're not going to attach like less than great products to it unless you're trying to denigrate the value of your brand 
the book itself. I mean, you're going to take your workbook seriously. You're going to take these checklists seriously, whether they're free downloads or paid products. You're going to take them seriously if you really take your book right. seriously or your course seriously. So um, right. brand consistency. That's right. Hey, are you worth like great money only on Mondays and Wednesdays and then not so much on Thursdays and Fridays? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, I don't get that thinking. Anyways, um, anything else to add? I can't think of anything else. No, just that it's, it's one of my favorite things to do is to really think about the companion something that I'm going to add to a book, right? So now I think about it in the, in terms of that three-legged stool, mm. the book, the companion and the course, even if it's a mini course, even if it's just a little tiny action guide that's downloadable, that's not even something that's printed. Mm. Right. I just really think about it in terms of those three things, because I want the user experience to be positive and comprehensive. I want them to really feel like, OK, I, I'm not having a conversation directly, but I am having a conversation directly because she's taking care of me and I've gotten the whole hmm. experience. And so that's what I encourage everyone to do is to not just put out a book. A book is not just a book anymore. It can be multiple income streams to your business through multiple items that you sell that complete the user's experience. And that's a win, win, win for sure. You know, your, your comment gave me, of course, you know, give me two seconds longer to think and I'll, I'll make, make a, make a thing happen. That's worth yeah. saying, but your comment really struck a chord with me on one point, And that is like, this is one of the bigger problems I see with course creators. We'll get all the way through the whole course creation process. And then we get to the topic on the business end of it. Like, how do you price the course? And almost always the mindset thing that we have to overcome is that we feel like it's not worth the sticker price that we want to ask for it. And yeah. it is absolutely worth it. And this is one of the ways you can just kind of kick yourself and say, yeah, what was I thinking? Like, if you add these elements, these companion products as an integrated piece of your course, the value goes through the roof. And so yeah. it's just greater justification for the price that you are asking for your, your course. Right. On, the, on your on your side of the fence for the book, it increases the product line value of the book, right? right. And it's a yeah. it's an it's like I mean I'm not going to ask to share numbers obviously, but I can just imagine that you've sold enough workbooks as companion or other companion products yesterday <laughs> to make <laughs> I it sold well, workbooks yesterday to make it worth while yeah. because you you are one of these evangelists for the i must write my book workbook you tell everybody you need this if nothing else for the timeline right when you provide something valuable and someone goes back to it over and over and over again mm -hmm. that's you know then then you engage word of mouth right it's not yeah. just you must read this book it's like you must read this book and get this workbook or this journal that goes along with it because it's going to help you in your process your results are going to be better and faster and less painful. Everything uh, comes into play there. I'm telling you right now, I want to stamp uh, on people's foreheads when they talk to me about this thing. Go look at page 46 through 48. That's your timeline. That's like everything. Um, it's That's your whole everything. project on those three pages right there. Yes. Um, and it also tells you when you're rushing. Yeah. Right. When you yep. say, oh, I want the holy Batman. My pants are on fire publication schedule and then you realize oh wait i don't have a first draft oh wait i haven't booked my editor right how long do the other team members need how long do i need to review my documents right i, I put those timelines in there on purpose because i see a lot of i'm putting out a book every 10 minutes and yet i wonder where the production schedule is in there it's like you don't just write and publish nobody who wants books to sell a decade from now just writes and publishes, writes and publishes. I have a writing and publication schedule a year, 14 months in advance. And I know exactly when the book is going to come out, come out. And that means I have to back up to when the first draft is done and goes to the editor, because it's not just me anymore, right? It's not just Honoré at oh, dark 30 typing away like the cat on the typewriter, right? It's then there are other people involved and I have to get the good people if I want the good product and I have to give them the time to do their work. So that might be a conversation for another video, but you know, you'll want to factor in doing a timeline for your workbook or guide yeah. or planner or journal on your yeah. schedule and have a, have another schedule 
to go in in concert with your book production schedule. Yeah, I don't see how, I mean, after going through this process with the book, I don't see how I could avoid two thirds of that checklist for the book for a companion publication. It's got to be, you know, everything from the edits through the proofreading through the formatting, all that is still there. It's like that doesn't go away just because it's a workbook. Um, right. I mean, this year, well, and again, that's if you're aiming for a, a professional publication, which you obviously do as um, yep. as a profession. Um, and that's what it takes. So you need that timeline. So anyways. Yeah. All right. Well, Honore, thank you so much for sharing your insights about the companion um, products. Uh, hopefully the comments about how to in integrate this into a couple of your different approaches, whether it be with books or with courses or with any other thing that you're offering, coaching programs, consulting yep. gigs, everything, all of those come with companion products. You can create these things and offer them with your primary offer, your primary product, and it creates an additional revenue stream, but it also just expands your brand, helps your learners in new ways, helps your end users, your readers, your clients in new ways. And um, it just, you know, it just speaks volumes about your brand and your values. So go out there and get it. Um, Miss Honore, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. We will see you guys in the next video. Oh, before I leave, don't forget to check out Empire Builders masterclass.com yes go ahead and like the video like the podcast subscribe to all the things keep coming back we'll see you guys on linkedin facebook and all the places